Now after the discussion of uh, gradient divergence and curve, we have seen into the last lecture that how to interpret the uh, physical meaning of gradient divergence and curve. Now we have to convert in the last lecture basically we have seen the meaning of uh, gradient operator when this gradient operator operate on the uh, temperature field that is a scalar field it gives a vector quantity that quantity basically indicate the direction towards the maximum chain towards the higher point and when I take the gradient of the potential this is a field of potential and this is a positive charge basically so in the surrounding of this I observe a field of the potential which is a scalar function when I take the gradient of that scalar function what I observe that I observe a vector quantity so that direction basically of that quantity is towards the maximum potential here darker portion is the dark portion is uh, uh, indicate to the higher potential uh, higher temperature and this higher potential so this is the meaning of uh, gradient the physical picture of the gradient then after we had discussed about the uh, divergence if we take uh, divergence of any uh, vector field then uh, what uh, we get basically as a result so when a divergence of any vector field is a scalar that means magnitude only and magnitude could be zero positive or negative so further what is the meaning of when uh, we get the result positive uh, zero or negative so in the last lecture we had discussed about this ki positive or, uh, the result is positive of divergence of any actor field that means is spreading the field is spreading the source the, the, there is the source uh, from that basically uh, line is coming out and when the divergence is negative that means flux uh, electric field lines or magnetic field line are converging uh, for when zero it means uh, the electric flux basically enter through this open surface and the amount is same when the uh, electric flux or magnetic flux comes out from the other faces so this time the total electric flux basically is zero so this was the physical interpretation physical picture of the uh, divergence and into the third one we have seen the geometrical picture of the curl so in case of uh, uh, we have considered here that this uh, is the magnetic field which is uh, rotating basically into this plane uh, this is x uh, axis and this one is the y axis a plane uh, in x y plane our curl is into the x y plane so uh, field is rotating basically so we have to find out the rate of the rotation and magnitude direction as well as so we can find out this with the help of curl so in ampere's law we have seen that if suppose current carrying conductor is along the z direction the magnetic field basically develops around that that magnetic field is representing by this uh, circle and the direction with the help of these arrows so I have to find out the rate uh, of this curl for that I have used this formula del cross B I can find out the direction and magnitude at this point P1, point P2, point P3 and so on the curl basically is into the x y plane and the direction of this axis basically of this rotation will be along the z direction the result of this curl will be along the z direction so this is the physical picture of the curl and after understanding the idea the physical concept of the gradient divergence and curl 
now what we have to do we have to basically study the basic four laws in elect electric uh, electricity and magnetism a uh, gauss law in electrostatics a uh, gauss law in magnetism uh, faraday law and uh, ampere's law these are basically four important laws into the electrodynamics and uh, uh, we have to convert the integral form of these four basic laws into the differential form but before that uh, we have uh, used uh, some mathematical statement of the gauss divergence theorem and the uh, stokes theorem so these are the fundamental theorem of the divergence this gauss divergence theorem so our purpose is uh, for this course basically uh, the, uh, we have to use only this mathematical statement that uh, explain about the closed surface integral of e dot ds basically this is the flux electric flux electric flux that is coming out from the closed surface as we have seen into the gauss law so this electric flux which is coming out from the closed surface is equal to the divergence of the electric field within the volume that is enclosed by the closed surface if i consider a sphere here this is an a sphere a positive charge q is kept at the center of this sphere so electric field lines which are coming out from the surface that will be total electric flux and this total electric flux oh, we can measure with the help of this mathematical formula e dot ds we have seen this uh, into gauss formula also so for that uh, we, what we uh, what we uh, what we have to do uh, we just consider in a small elementary area ds and we assume that electric field line also passing through this that is constant everywhere at the surface so that is e dot ds is the electric flux which comes out through this a small elementary area ds so that will be d phi so suppose i want to find out the total electric flux through that closed surface then i have to take the closed surface integral of this quantity e dot ds so e dot ds closed surface integral of e dot ds is the total electric flux these electric field lines basically is the total electric flux or with the help of the divergence of the electric field we can also measure the electric flux so these are the basically two terms uh, through the closed surface or within the volume that volume basically now if suppose i want i take the divergence at these points here there here at every point i take the divergence so basically what i am doing i am just uh, measuring the electric field lines through that so some of these divergence uh, within this volume will be automatically that will be electric flux so gauss divergence theorem states about the electric flux within the volume or flux which is coming out from that surface closed surface so it means that surface integral of any vector field over a surface over a closed surface is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of the same vector field over the volume enclosed within that closed surface so the volume enclosed by this closed surface in which if we will measure the divergence of that electric field that will be equal to the electric flux through this closed surface so you can measure the electric flux by this way or you can measure the electric flux within the volume by this way so ultimately we are getting the total electric flux so this is also a relationship between the surface integral to the volume integral if you want to convert this closed surface integral into the volume integral you can use this formula so this is the gauss divergence theorem 
which we will use to convert the integral equation into the differential form. Next is uh, the fundamental theorem of the curl that is known as the Stokes theorem. Here closed path integral E dot dl. Uh, this is closed path. Uh, suppose this is in tangent E and this is the center of the square. dl is a small segment. Vector dl is a small segment on this circumference of the square so direction of this will be towards the length of the wire and this is E. E dot DL means this complete cycle the total circumference it indicates to the potential bus but here what we have, we are showing the closed path integral E dot DL this total E dot DL will be equal to the this is the open surface if you consider a small small segment of the curl you take the curl of a small portion within this open surface and add to all of them then we will get the bigger one circle this upper this last one Add addition of these small small curls within this open surface will be equal to the large one. So curl. So this equation is Stokes theorem basically states that the line integral of any vector field, here vector field we are considering electric field around any closed loop. This is our closed loop is equal to the surface integral of the curl surface integral of the curl this is open surface integral of the curl of the same field E we are considering here over the total surface enclosed by that closed loop this closed loop enclosed this open surface and into this surface we are considering a small small portion of the curl and some of these curl basically indicate to this large one so both are the there are two different way to explain this so this e dot dl is equal to in terms of the open surface integral del cross e dot ds dot ds because del cross e is a vector that will be a vector quantity and this ds area vector ds this result of this del cross v will be a vector quantity so closed path integral e dot dl is equal to open surface integral 